My name is Grace Rocco and I'm the District 33 Chief Judge. <laughs> For those of you who know me well, you know how silly that title is for me, but I care deeply about contests and like Carol I have been involved in every single contest and when I say every single contest I mean every single contest since 1998. Wow. <laughs> I tried to I tried to count up how many contests I have competed in it has to be around 40. I've organized quite a few contests. Before I knew it was a no-no, I organized one contest and competed in it myself. But I was not a judge. <laughs> I learned a lot about contests by doing. I recognized right away from my very first year the value of contests for people in increasing their speaking ability. A contest performance is a quantum leap. It would so happen that in my first year as district chief judge, it is the first year of the table topics contest. This is something that since 1998 I have completely skipped over in the rule book. <laughs> How many people have ever seen the Toastmasters rule book? Not everybody. But Bob, you've been in 30 years. You've never looked at the rules? <laughs> <laughs> if you go on to toastmasters.org, and the, the link is on the back of one of your handouts tonight, you will find the rule book. And all of the materials that you're going to see tonight are also in the rule book. You can verify and go back and study and you do not need to be able to log on to access this material. All this material is available to anyone if they know to Toastmasters.org. <coughs> there are also quite a few videos and other materials online about contests so if you're the type of person that relates well to your computer and you want to learn more about the contest that way please do but what I've learned is that people don't learn very well from a computer. They like to learn in person, just like we're doing tonight. We like to meet people. And <clears throat> so learn tonight. And then if you have questions or after the meeting tonight and you want to study up and challenge something that you heard me say that might not have been correct, I welcome that because I'm learning right along with you. So I'm going to cover the format of the contest, I'm going to cover what makes a good table topics question, and I'm going to cover what makes a good table topics answer. Timing. There was a little question, Ron prepared my slides for me today because he's kind and I was needing some help. and. He mistook the red, yellow, and blue, the red, yellow, green, the green, red, yellow light timing for a different timing. He had that wrong, but we corrected it. The table topic is one to two minutes. Now in this case, you do not get a leeway on the bottom side. You have to speak at least one minute and you cannot speak more than two and a half minutes so you'll be disqualified if you speak can you see that yeah, all right mm -hmm. that. The, you'll be disqualified if you speak less than one minute or more than two minutes and 30 seconds That's a great way to get out of going on further if you want to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I did that once. <laughs> so what are the topics? A table topics question does not have to be a question. It's a topic. And every single contestant in a particular contest gets the same question. 
at our club meetings, we have different questions, but in a contest, everybody gets the same question because they everybody get, has to have the same opportunity to answer. That means that the contestants have to leave the room except for the first contestant. So it's similar to the evaluation contest in that way. The question itself should not be too long because the Toastmaster has to recite it, then recite it again, and the person has to hear it and hear it again, and they can't ask for a repeat. So it should be a question that's, some people say, no longer than 12 words. I think it can go longer than that, but it shouldn't be a really long question. And the format, when the Toastmaster gives it, is it would say, Nathan Oren, our first contestant, what is your favorite color? What is your favorite color? Nathan Oren. The contestant has an opportunity to pause a reasonable length of time, just like in any speaking event where you come up front, there's a moment where you can pause. That pause cannot go on for too long though or the timer will the timing will begin. The second item here, reasonable length. The <coughs> should also require not require detailed knowledge. This is a really important thing because if I asked Jan, for example, what do you think about the Medicare program? You could speak on that. If I said, Erica, what do you think about the Medicare program? Probably you're not, you haven't been thinking about that too much. Probably haven't been researching that. So that's not a fair question. It's a good table topics question if you're asking the right person, but it's not a fair question. It is also recommended to stay away from the same kinds of things you stay away from at a dinner party, politics, mm -hmm. religion, and anything else that you might think is a sensitive subject that would make uh, the respondent feel uncomfortable. The question should allow the contestant to speak to encourage them to speak, to give them the opportunity to make a well-formed answer that comes to a conclusion. And you have to make darn sure that none of the contestants know what the questions are in advance, or it's not fair. I have heard that there are people who prepare, you ever, in your club, if you ever have someone in your club who sort of has a prepared anecdote that they tell when they have table topics. You ask them any question and they say, well that's a very interesting question, Marie, but what I'm, is really on my mind is, <laughs> and then they go off on their anecdote. In a table topics contest, you have to actually answer the question and it can't sound like you have prepared an anecdote or the judges are going to mark you down. Some of the ways that they protect the knowledge of the question is many questions are prepared and put in sealed envelopes and not even the contest Toastmaster knows the question. Have any of you started to think about what would form a good question? Because you're, please, I want everybody to have at least one question that they put on one of the three by five cards. Contestants will receive no advanced knowledge. It's kind of a, like a mission impossible because you can imagine that if somebody creates the questions they could leak the information to the contestants. So you have to be very careful about that. And just like in a evaluation contest, once one contestant is done, the next one is brought into the room until all have been brought into the room. And just like at any contest, there's a minute of silence for the judges to mark their ballots.
This is the format of the introduction, the speaker's name, the question, the question, and the speaker's name. And whoever is the Toastmaster should be a person who can really enunciate and give that question clearly to be fair to the contestant. That's not in the rules, but that's my suggestion. This is the judging criteria. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can read this, but you have in your materials that same ballot. And the judging on a table topics question is very similar to judging on a speech. You, uh, 30 points are put toward speech development. In other words, they want an opening, a middle, and a conclusion in your speech. The 25 points, nearly as much, is put on the emphasis of how effective is the answer? How does the person respond? Are they, are they responding to the question? Are they making good points? Are they making good logic? Is it interesting? Does it hold your attention? That's over half of the points right there. So the, spe the speech development and the effectiveness. Physical. I talked to a district champion of table topics yesterday, Katie Porter, who is a recent district governor in our district, but she used to live in San Diego and she was a contestant there and won district level table topics contest and she said that the advice there is that, that it, to give a good table topics you have to have one really good interesting gesture and she said in her winning table topics she had a airplane she did an airplane with her hand and she thought that was an effective body movement but they want to see some kind of body movement in your table topic obviously they want to hear your voice you have to be able to really talk loud and she said I mean she actually said that she said talk loud that will help that will boost your if you talk softly it doesn't help but other kind other inflections we have some people who are just masters at inflection when they speak and those people I would say have an advantage at table topics if they have the rest going for them <coughs> appropriateness a lot of our judging forms have that term and we I often wonder is does this mean not saying naughty words <laughs> or does this mean that it's on point and I think in this case it, it has to do with is it on point is it a response to the question being asked and then of course you want to pay attention to pe are people using grammar correctly are they are they speaking correctly do they use the language well and that's worth only five points so if you have someone who isn't good at that but they're good at everything else they might be the winner This is the tail end of the ballot where the judges put their marks uh, for the names for first, second, and third place. This isn't specific to the table topics contest because the bottom of the ballot always looks like this. But it can never be emphasized too much that when you're a judge and you're judging a contest, especially one where it really matters, you want to be able to fill out that bottom of the ballot very well. You want to sign your name, you want to print your name. You want to put first, second, and third place contestants. And the only time you wouldn't put a name in each level is if there were only two contestants. Or sometimes there are contests where there is only one contestant. <laughs> and, I know, that sounds funny, doesn't it? Then they lose. <laughs> a contest a contest still has to be held especially at area level if there's only one contestant in that area who is willing to compete 
there has to be a contest held. Mm. Never, if you're a judge, never pay attention over here. That's for the counters. I, don't, I wish they didn't put it there, but it's there. But you, three names and two signatures, you tear it off and you hand it in. And it's amazing how few people, how many people can get that wrong. You think that's pretty simple, but it, it's easy when you're judging. Have you ever done it wrong, Dick? Yeah, it's easy. You forget one thing and then your ballot's thrown out. Are there any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've got two quick ones. Uh, mm -hmm. Qualifications for table topics. <clears throat> any member in good standing may compete. Okay. And the club has to be in good standing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, any member of a club in good standing. Thank you, Ron. Second question is, uh, we have, I think, six different uh, divisions, or in the, well, in the division of six different areas. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. Who's going to uh, police the questions at the different levels? Because I presume at each level they should be different. Mm -hmm. the Is that your job? The mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it could be my job if I was assigned that job by a, the contest chair. And the answer in the rules is the contest chair governs the questions and manages the questions, the secrecy of the questions, the development of the questions. The contest chair, who is the contest chair, is a question in itself. And in at club level, sometimes someone says, I'll organize the contest, then they are the contest chair. At area level, in our community, often our three area directors are our contest chairs. They co-chair the contest. However, they might hire another person to be contest chair and if they did so, that person would be the one that decided how the questions would be generated and how the secrecy would be maintained. Did I get both of the, your answers? Well, I just, I'm just wondering how they're going to police the questions at the different levels. Oh, I, that's a good question because if Will, that, will it be the same question? And how do you know that it isn't the same question? Yes, and I believe that it would be a really good idea for, at each level, people to say, what were your questions? Because we want to use different questions. Right. So that's a good thing. And that's something that isn't covered in the rule books, but it's something that we could pay attention to. Yeah. So thank you. Four Christine. Four areas are having that contest on the same day. The three areas here and E2. So it's only E1 and E5 who are going to have the contest either on, the Mar on March 4th or on March 30th. So in terms of knowing the questions, there's four areas who will have it, be having it simultaneously. I guess the question over here is <coughs> having a different question for each area, E3, E4, <coughs> E6, to keep the contest interesting, <coughs> since typically there's a joint contest here. Mm -hmm. And division will be different as well. Yeah, and but what might be a good idea, and I think what Dick was pointing out, is that whatever the questions are at the area, take care not yeah. to repeat those questions at division, and similarly not repeat those questions, any of the questions at district. That'll be a little harder to track. Melissa? So what you're saying is that the club will pick its question, whoever their contest chair is will determine the question right. for that club and then we pass that information up so it doesn't get repeated. You can, yes. Right. Yeah, that would be useful. I also have another question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is it in our club when we get up, or many people when we get up to do table topics, will thank the, uh, thank you table topics master or mistress or whatever you want to say. Is that appropriate in a contest setting to do that? I imagine your time would start then and it would eat out of it, which I imagine it does in our club as well, but that's something people do. And club, is there specifics on what you, guidelines on what you... That, that's a really good question, whether you should address the Toastmaster. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, for that wonderful question. There's no requirement to say that. And sometimes you can handle that handoff and that respect to your Toastmaster with just a gesture. 
On the other hand, one of the things you're doing with table topics is you're starting your speech in a polite, well-formed way and you're buying a little time. And I think it probably would be fine to say, you're only losing a few seconds, and you would say, oh, thank you, uh, Madam Toastmaster. I really appreciate that question and launch. And okay. once, you, once you started talking, it, it eases you into talking. And so I would have- used to I, it, because we are used to it in our yeah. club. Many of us do that. Yeah, Matthew. Is the, does the clock start running when you begin to respond? or at the point where you say, thank you for giving me that question, and then when the answer starts. The timing rules generally state that when the contestant utters the first sound, it begins. However, if the contestant starts the answer to the table topics question, what is your favorite dance might be the question, and the person starts going like this, they're, they're communicating to the audience. And so that would be, the timing would start when they, when they began that Later. definitive gesture. <laughs> and I also, the contestant may pause a reasonable amount of time without the timing beginning but they can't carry that out too long and it's under the discretion of the timers to begin the timing. Christine, what's your question? You mentioned that <coughs> the Toastmaster introduces a contestant by their name, question, question, name. Mm -hmm. So in terms of logistics, does the, do they wait for the contestants to, to come up to the stage area <coughs> before announcing their name and then the question because that might be a little different from the evaluation I'm not sure I don't remember exa exactly whether we introduce the evaluator as they're walking up mm -hmm. or whether we wait for them to come up to the stage before introducing them so the choreography of how the handoff occurs and how the contestant is present to actually hear the question is very important and we would want to consider that. My recommendation would be that the sergeant at arms who's handling the contestants in the other room know the order of the speakers as would be in the evaluation contest that the Sergeant at Arm escorts the next contestant to the front of the room, <coughs> and then the question, the name, the question, the question, and the name are uttered at that time. <laughs> we have time for one more question in this presentation, but any of your unanswered questions will be answered later. So, Carol. Because this is all new, is there going to be any kind of training for the judges? If that's something that you recommend, I think that we I'm can. Thinking, this is totally different than anything mm -hmm. anybody's used to. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, there, you know, it would be nice to have some kind of guidelines mm -hmm. as a table topics because I wouldn't. I mean, table topics is so different in all of our yeah. clubs, mm -hmm. and we don't we don't <laughs> evaluate it on mm -hmm. the basis of is it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Is it effective? Is there enthusiasm? Uh, so, so the uh, Carol makes a good point that maybe we should spend a little bit more time training the judges for this contest because it is going to be a challenging contest to judge, I think. And so let's think about that, and then in our discussion later on, we can cover that. It's been my pleasure to give this presentation, which if it isn't uh, too rambling and strange will be posted for the, all of District 33 to see and I'm really uh, thankful for the excellent questions and what the questions that you have asked will help me understand what else needs to be known because we're all in this together and we'll get it right the first time.